Hello and welcome to another episode of the Two Medics podcast. My name is Imran Lasker. I'm a consultant radiologist. And hi, my name is Dusha Gunawardner. I'm a cardiology registrar subspecializing in intervention. And we are a bit late on recording again this week. Last week was a literally last minute thing. And again, we're not quite as last minute, but I will be editing and pretty much publishing straight away. Uh, what happened yeah. this week? It was my fault, wasn't it? It was my yeah. fault this time. Yeah, so yeah. It's all vanity, isn't it? So It is vanity. It's all based on vanity. Everything's yeah. just um, like a massive vanity. This podcast, your TikTok, <laughs> and now where does it stop? Uh, is any of oh, you yeah. like soon? Like each week will be delayed because each part of you is being replaced by something bionic. So what bit of you is getting replaced <laughs> this week? <laughs> Well, I've done the eyes. I've done the eyes. Yeah. That was decent. So now I'm yeah. trying to fix my teeth because I hate my right. teeth. Um, they're really busted. And then busted, so next, so... next your pecs, you're going to get pec implants. Well, so. Yeah, why not? Actually, didn't who sent us that video of someone what taking... What didn't like... you? Don't start with all that, did it? <laughs> yeah, someone, sent us a, someone sent us a video of like someone getting fat taken away from other parts of their body and injected into other parts of the body to make them look hench. And it was actually oh. not a terrible result in terms of... That's yeah, you terrible. could imagine nice. that if the guy was wearing a t-shirt, you think he looks pretty huge. But yeah, what a compliment! Because yeah, that, yeah, dude, that's like not terrible. <laughs> that's what every guy wants to hear. So, I mean, do they accept donations? I could donate stuff, I suppose. Yeah, some oh, weird man. procedures out there. I don't know, yeah. man. What do you think of all that? Because people do implants, and um, there's such a huge pressure to be a certain way, but if they can't, if they, what true. happens if they genuinely can't get there? If they genuinely, they've tried everything and they can't get yeah. there. Because everyone, because someone who's actually physically fit will say, well, you're not trying hard enough, you're still going to keep going. But they have, then what do they do? Do they just I go for surgery? Is that all right? I think whatever makes people happy, right? Like, you know, yeah, that's true. That's like, true. I mean, like, ultimately, like, if it means that when they look in the mirror, they feel a bit happy, happier with themselves. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I think someone sent a tweet out once and there was like, this guy had like a really... I mean, I'm going to say it because I've got a big nose, but they had a really big nose and then they got it changed and they looked incredible. Uh, you know, the tweet <laughs> no, was like yeah. negative. Like, oh, how could you do that to your face? You looked amazing. And I looked like, right. no, they look, but they look way better now. <laughs> right now. I'm not even going to say anything. And it's a bit um, like that 10 years younger show. Did you ever see that? It was, I used to love yeah, that yeah, TV yeah. show. And yeah. it, it was terrible because they were completely faked out and like Botox and those jobs and teeth implants. Yeah. But at the end of it, some of them were just like, well, actually all of them looked incredible just incredible in comparison to where they were so um yeah. i don't know man yeah who knows i won't rule anything out you never know yeah, so we kind of agreed that our first topic was going to be because obviously we hine we hine we we mine most of the talking points and stuff from twitter and obviously mm. it's impossible to avoid online the kind of massive disruption or at least the kind of agitation that's um a result of um elon musk buying twitter mm. uh, i think it's just impossible to kind of miss it really um, yeah. What's your kind of take on it all? I don't know. I mean, again, maybe I'm taking it the wrong way, but I'm a bit indifferent because I just okay. think to myself, well, I mean, I think he's going to make his few moves and stuff. People are still going to enjoy Twitter. Twitter's still got loads of people. It's got the user base. It still does the main things. Some things might work. Some things might not. And the good thing and bad thing, I guess, about the software stuff is that if something doesn't work, they just pull back. I mean, Facebook had done it plenty of times, although Facebook is maybe not a good example because not really uses Facebook anymore. But um, mm. I just think that um, the problem with Elon is that he is so well-known. He is so well-known. He's like a juggernaut in himself. And it does often make me think about um, the story someone told me where they bumped into Richard Branson on the plane. And they walked up to Richard Branson and said, I'm a massive fan. And I kept thinking to myself, but what are you a fan of? Like, they're not mm. singing, they're not dancing, they're not making movies. Like, what is it a fan of? And so I guess it must be that at, at this present time in, in life in general, I guess, millionaires can become, have their own fans. Just because yeah, millionaires. Yeah, they like, they go make money, which is their main thing. And then somehow they end up making fans. And so I think that's why Elon and like many, a few other entrepreneurs and uh, millionaires, They've ended up becoming just so big that he could have been a, they're, they're, I mean, there are people who aren't as rich as Elon, fair enough, but there are people who are very wealthy that could have taken over Twitter with the same amount of money yeah. that he just bought it for and probably made some quieter moves and no one would have really known about it. No one would have cared. Like it just, and he's so vocal, right? That's the thing with him. He's so vocal about <laughs> how he does and says. Yeah. Have you seen some of the stuff he's come out with though? He's like, yeah. there's like some messages recently being like, oh, like it's interesting how the way that YouTube like embed their videos. Is that something that we could do? And uh, I saw like Rohan being like, it's as if this guy spent all this money on this platform and hadn't even like considered 
anything <laughs> really and he's just and he's just kind of broadcasting it to the world and so everyone obviously everyone's looking at that being like but this isn't good is it like this guy has not he's kind of come into this position he's mm. fired a whole load of people right and people mm. are kind of feeling quite upset by that like it's very, like one of the first people he fired was like the head of like legal and the people <laughs> of, like, copyright and um anyone uh, the whole like equality you know there's a kind of um side of twitter that's uh, devoted towards um making it accessible and they're all mm. they're all sacked and um we knew that kind of twitter at the best of times uh could be a real cesspit for kind of like racists and misogyny and whatever and reporting stuff was difficult before and now people are thinking well looking at kind of elon's brand because you know as you're mentioning kind of he does have this kind of fan base and when there are tweets or things criticizing him these people just kind of like rush in to like defend him and it's oddly yeah you know, yeah, yeah that's so, what i mean he's got a cult that's yeah anything about him that's a bit weird is that um he's not only someone that has got to this level of wealth he's also got this level of fandom that people really believe that this and i've joked about it trust Elon and stuff but in reality i mean look i mean the guy's just a dude with a lot of money and the thing is um and obviously there's more to him than that but i think sometimes i hype things a little bit because if you really look yeah. into what happened like he was on the board of PayPal and then they kind of tried to get rid of him. That's why he ended up leaving PayPal and he didn't make PayPal. He had X money, uh, something, uh, money X or something.com, which then got bought by PayPal. And then he ended up being on the board of that. And then when they got rid of him, they gave him big payout. And then people were like, oh yeah, but he's changing the world. Like he's, you know, he's made electric cars. Like, no, he didn't make electric cars. Someone else made, I mean, electric cars have been around for a long time, but someone else came up with Tesla and then came to him and he invested heavily in it. Fair enough. And then took over and then pretty much blanked out the other two people that were part of it. And then they kind of disappeared and left. So yeah. all this stuff about being, you know, the, um, the person who's thinking about the future and stuff. Actually, I feel like he's just a person that clearly buys stuff and then kind of moves with it. And, you know, I think there's more, a lot of situation. And for me, the 44 billion, whatever it, it took him to buy Twitter. I mean, that's a, that's just a, I mean, it feels like, um, an impulse buy, doesn't it? Yeah. Just like, well, I can't. Uh, oops, yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? Like flex. sometimes yeah. people spend a lot of money on dumb stuff and maybe that's what it is. And that's his version of these things because they're, they're on another planet, these kind of, well, huh. well it's strange well, to say he's on another planet, he's on Mars. Uh, anyway, yeah. More cynically though, I mean, obviously mm. people say that if you look at the way that the kind of media, the kind of newspapers are controlled and how that uh, influences political opinions of people and people are recognizing now that kind of social media is how kind of the younger generations kind of consume news and content. I mean, mm. yeah, how many people are our age or younger buy newspapers? So mm. um, cynically, though, you kind of wonder, well, I mean, getting get, we know that kind of Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, there were algorithms or whatever that um, would kind of favor certain political broadcasts, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. cynically, yeah, yeah. you know, there's, there is money to be made there, but also there is kind of political capital, you know, there's power, you know. Ning. Yeah, but that's always the case, even with the broadsheets and all the rest of us. And wasn't Rupert yeah, Murdoch yeah, yeah. for a while one of the most powerful people in the world? Because, I mean, he yeah, still yeah. is very As powerful, in, but Yeah, I just think we're kind of power. like, I think the thing with Elon Musk that kind of unnerves me is because people think he's, is he, he like you know that stuff about YouTube and whatever? Maybe he is an idiot, or maybe mm. he is. It's like a bit like, oh, I'm not going to compare him to Trump, but I, like, you know, sometimes you're like, is he really like that much of an idiot, or you know, or is it? I don't know. Or is it like Boris Johnson? Like, just mm. where is it? Is it like an act? And, and yeah, I, I don't, don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he. I don't think. I mean, clearly he's not an idiot. He's. I mean, if I, he's done pretty well, but I just think that like. um this is probably, I mean, look, 44 billion for buying this is like chump change. I mean, how, what in his life has changed is losing, for, losing, let's say, quotation mark, 44 billion. And if he really yeah. wanted to, he could step back and let it run the way it, well, it just runs. And it wouldn't even be an issue. And he could run it to the ground. It wouldn't be an issue to him and his life. It just doesn't yeah. make a difference at all to yeah. him. Um, well, but I think for us as users, I, I personally don't think, I personally think that um, experience things change. aren't going to change that much. And it's the same yeah. as when um, WhatsApp was bought by Facebook. Everyone's like, oh, you know, I'm not going to use WhatsApp anymore. It's bought by Facebook. They're just going to mine all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, I know that, but they're doing that already. They've been doing that for a long time. Like, I just don't see people leaving it anytime soon. I mean, that's Fair just enough. me, but I mean, maybe I've got that wrong and we'll be using, what's it called again? You're going to do, you're going to teach everyone yeah, yeah, how to so use joined, Mastodon. Yes. Least, yeah, literally just joined Mastodon. 
Seems all right. Mm. Um, I think one of the key differences is that it's not kind of algorithm based and it's more based on who you follow rather than likes and stuff. So oh, I think okay. uh, people cynically said uh, that Twitter, what it would do is obviously look at kind of um, things that are generating views and often that would, and it seemed to almost promote conflict in the way that it brings stuff to people's attention. And mm. uh, this is supposed to be um, more based on literally the people you follow. So you're more likely to consume content relating to, you know, the circles that you stay in. So I think in terms of that, probably more kind of like twitter circles yeah exactly <laughs> like that yes more com more confirm more confirm you know people talk about echo chambers and stuff but let's be honest like safer places to be and yeah, i think yeah you know i was saying to you before we kind of came on that um it might be that this is one of these things where people kind of flow like i joined macedon age like a year or two ago briefly just to see what it was like and then just didn't mm. kind of take it up because the interface is like a bit different but mm. it might be that this is something that kind of becomes you know, um, yeah, I don't, who knows? So, it could be, join us it on could there. be, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I will have to join uh, Mastodon as well and just see what the their, what, what would we call Med Mastodon? Is that what we'd call it? <laughs> Med Twitter um, versus Med Mastodon. <laughs> some people have called it two medics, one Mastodon. Oh, oh one well, let's coin that phrase now before, uh, <laughs> yeah, copyright, it gets copyright. taken away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the funny um, things I wanted to say whilst we're on the topic of Elon was, mm. you know, so do you see that whole thing with blue ticks? And so people who had verified accounts, oh, he's so going to charge funny. them, right? He's cracking and so, me up, yeah, yeah, people getting vexed by it. But anyway, uh, one kind of interesting kind of comparison, which I thought was quite nice, is they're like, people who are aghast at the idea of that. But think about how journals work. And if you mm. think about it, like, look, there's lots of people essentially provide free content on Twitter. And now mm. we're going to charge people to provide that free content. Like a lot mm. of how a lot of how like medical journals run their business, <laughs> you know their business origin. And, well, yeah, I mean, I keep getting messages like um, I think I did, uh, my name ended up on one journal ages ago, and oh, then yeah. ever cool. since that I keep getting um, messages from a like other journals and other things like hi, uh, we saw that you've done this. Would you like to publish your next paper in this? It will cost you this much. I'm like, no, not at all. I mean, for me anyway, the juice is not worth a squeeze even if it was for free, because all that effort, all that time, and it's going to get result in nothing back. And now you're telling me on top of that, I'm going to have to pay for it. No, nah, yeah. mate, just, and I keep trying <laughs> to email them back to go away. No, instead, please don't, I don't, I'm not into research and that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, they just keep coming back at me. Hmm. I mean, some people probably want, um, Elon to just sort of disappear onto an Island, uh, don't they maybe go onto something like celebrity, um, get me out of here, oh, which, gosh. um, <laughs> brings us on to, uh, an old health secretary, um, uh, Matt Hancock. Yeah. Yeah. Old health go secretary on. is funny, isn't it? Because it really depends on the perspective because an old health secretary could be like five weeks ago or six oh, weeks yeah, ago. That's true. Yeah. I wasn't even. I think I saw a video of a health secretary and it took me ages to realize that that was a Scottish one. And I thought, because I thought, oh, okay, that, is that the health secretary now? Yeah, okay, now, cool. yeah, because it's changed so much. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So yeah. he's going to be on Celebrity. Is it the Celebrity? I'm a celeb, get me, on, get me out of here. Is yeah, he there? I'm a celeb, get me out of there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So do you watch that show? Not at all. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Not at all. I think I saw like a few clips when I'm Khan was on, but I think I was just flicking channels and I was like, oh, what's he doing there? And then... Um, yeah. Maybe when Peter Andre was on, on there, wasn't he on there? I'm pretty sure he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. he was. And then um, I think a few like once when um, Peter Andre was on there. Of course. Um, but then that was actually more because I was thinking, oh, is that Peter Andre? Is he still hench? He is still hench. Good for him. And that was it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> check of gains, gains checked. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a gain yeah. check. Yeah, good boy. Yeah. Good man. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, I tell, oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, I bumped into him once. Um, but, oh, really? Um, yeah, I was just. Um, it was weird. I went on holiday, and I literally was on the beach, thinking, you know, who had a solid physique was that like Peter Andre. That guy had a solid physique. And right. then I came back, and I saw him in the airport, and I was, I was like, oh, should I say hello? No, I'm not going to say hello, and I left it. But uh, He's, yeah, do you see there's some videos? I think on TikTok of him being really quite unpleasant. With oh, is he? he was with yeah, like oh yeah, I've of, seen that. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, very controlling um, and stuff. Of um, yeah, and Peter I was like, Price, oh, yeah. Really? okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you, not such a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you think about how they were portrayed at the beginning, it was always kind of like mm. her, like not wanting to be with him and kind of being mean mm. to him or whatever. And now you're like, oh, and it just goes to show really how little we understand about kind of from what we kind of consume about people's lives and stuff. Mm. And it's a completely different story of the back, the background. But going back to Man Han Matt Hancock, who obviously also. What is he doing? What, what is, is he doing? doing? What is he mm. not doing? He's obviously, mm. you know, doing a few things. And then obviously uh, had 
he's just, just chasing some sort of like tail. social media no so he's trying to be a <laughs> tail he's trying to he's chasing some sort of like celebrity status yeah. away from politics he's got isn't tiktok it? as well he he's been do oh, he's wow. doing tiktok and he's yeah he's tough i don't isn't know he? what to make of him i mean like, that's the thing like i feel like he's one of those people that if he was just sitting there with a blank face you still probably hate him yeah do you think like i don't know what it is i don't know what it is about him but um away from that i just think that um yeah, he, I don't know, man. He's just trying to branch out from politics, but he must be living in his own little world. Does he think that, what would he be like, a nasty Nick character or something? Is that what this no, is? No, I think this is like a rebrand. You know, like how Boris, yeah. like, you know, mm. he went to be like under mayor and he's a bit of a clown or whatever. Mm. And I think, or like, and he might look at the way like Ed Miliband had the radio show and then has a kind of bit of a cult following. And mm. I think that's what he's trying to generate for himself. Like get the youth on board, you know, going on TikTok and then, immerse like have people kind of perhaps kind of base stuff on like quirky personality if he had any but he doesn't have a personality that's the problem and but and then he could kind of re-enter politics as a kind of i don't know thing a slightly more hip and cool thing yeah, i mean look i was thinking maybe this is just an all one big mistake like you know how elon's gone and bought twitter and some people are yeah. saying it was a bit of an impulse buy do you think he was you know he thought it was some sort of um would like get away or something and he put his name down and thought what on earth is this and he turns up like what is Anton Deck doing here oh my god I've just signed up for the wrong thing it's too late now um but a little bit like the other tweet that you put in through Sha, thinking about my friend who want to explore her bisexuality and finally plucked up the courage to go to an introduction to beavers workshop <laughs> at the lesbian camp at a festival where at and it was uh an ecologist talking about beavers the mammal for 90 minutes so um yeah, is Matt Hancock meeting much beaver or anything else out there? Do you think? What do you reckon? I hope. I hope. <laughs> oh, it's God. Maybe you had um, enough in the, in Parliament already. Okay, I'm going to stop now. That's a terrible joke. I think. Yeah, it's, that was terrible. <laughs> but I think the idea. I think people will kind of find it funny. The idea of like him eating like kangaroo testicles or whatever, which is just gross, isn't it? But what, one of the more interesting things, and it's so like Tory of him, <laughs> is that you know obviously they get paid. They'll get paid. You'll be paid to be mm. on there. And mm. sure, we don't have a right to demand how he spends that money. Is he an MP mm. star? I don't know. I don't so is he doing it on what. MP time or whatever? Mm. Well, that's a question. Um, mm. But <laughs> interestingly, they asked him, well, what is he going to do with all that mo with the money? And he's like, oh, you know, some of it will go to charity. Like, yeah. what's all of it shit? All of it shit if, yeah. he's doing, if he's doing it on the public dollar. But, you know, I think when Amir Khan went on Celebrity uh, Get Me Out of Here, I had a few mates on the WhatsApp group. Oh, how could he do that? He's like cheapening boxing and all this kind of thing. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Boxing was already cheap, yeah, because you could, <laughs> I mean, you've got Logans and all that kind of stuff fighting. It's not a big deal. And plus, if you make a liver getting punched in the face, yeah, yeah, where you could, you know, potentially get injured quite badly and someone else comes along and says, listen, yeah, Here's I'll some give you a bit of money to turn up onto this island. Yeah, like, yeah. what are you think? And I'm like, you know what? Compared to my like, normal job, saying... I get punched in the face. Exactly. <laughs> you're saying there's no face punching. <laughs> Sign me up. People make money without getting punched in the face. Are you serious? What? Like, how Why much are we talking talk... about here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't someone tell me about that 10 years ago? I'd have started trading for that sooner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So th maybe this is the same thing here. It's like, well, hold up. You're going to give me this and I don't have to, what, like, talk. I just got to eat things. I mean, I eat things for free, but you're telling me I could get paid to eat things uh, and just sit around and yeah okay i'll do it i mean you know i was doing the similar things in parliament but i'll do it and get watched on an island as well so maybe it's a smart move on his side of things and um yeah i don't know i always feel a bit weird when people get pushed on what they do with their own money you know i don't know man like yeah, yeah. who cares what they do with their money like what are you trying That's to what say I brought up, actually i'd be interested i was kind of interested to know what your thing on is anyway like speaking really? of matt Go hancock on. and people who give you the, well i mean he gives mm. me the ick. um mm. joseph factor he did an interesting tweet yeah which says yeah. does anyone get massive ick when they see a discharge summary that has a final line saying we wish them well i can't <laughs> put my finger on why it makes me so annoyed I do wish the patients well. Wellness forever. I just don't like it at the bottom of the discharge summary. It's funny because I kind of feel like I read that in his voice. But mm. I get what he's talking about. Yeah, um, same. I, get that. I think it I sounds insincere. I think that's what gives me the ick. Is that what gives yeah. you the ick? Yeah, it just feels a bit like, okay, well, good riddance. Good luck kind of thing. That's what it feels like to me. Like, we wish them uh, well. Good luck to you. Yeah. Good luck to you. Uh, yeah. We've done what we could. but Never you know, darken well, just... my door again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, we can't darken my door, but anyway, yeah, because yeah. um, I'm more dark, dark enough. enough. Yeah. yeah, it's already dark enough. Um, yeah, yeah, it, that, that, it does of... give me the ick. Go on. So, what are mm. 
you know, begs the question on requests, not demands, mm. not orders, mm. requests for radiology. What are the things, the statements that give you the ick? You know, it's not ick, but I just feel like I've said this before, haven't I? Where I, when someone says tummy, you know, when they write something, <laughs> tummy pain, I'm like, well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you know, you don't need to be saying stuff like that, you know, or yeah. they would just say something like, um, a person is woozy. I was like, listen, oh, did yeah. you even think wow. about what you wrote there? Like, why are you writing woozy? Like, at least yeah. put, you know, speech marks. At least you can pretend yeah. someone else said it. But yeah. if you're just going <laughs> to put it as your own language, then it just makes me wonder, like, how much you, I mean, how much effort did you put into this? I mean, I don't know. But I'm, obviously, I'm joking in parlor. I know you're a lot busy and you're filling out your forms and stuff. But it, those are little things that kind of jump at me. Be like, all right, okay, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, I think once someone, um, I think they were trying to test this new pathway of just going straight to thrombolysis. And um, the people uh, in any they realized that they could get these CT. I mean, I'm not saying like it was vindictive or anything, but it was funny because usually when you get this request, you'll say like right side of weakness, et cetera, et cetera, you know, um, query stroke or something. Mm. But they, when they realized they could just get a stroke, um, a CT scan because it is query stroke, they just put IVT. And at first I thought, why is all these like requests coming in saying question mark IVT, question mark IVT? And it was meant to be like in, intravenous thrombosis, um, thrombolysis. Uh, I was like, all oh, right. So basically, you just shortened it so much that, like, all I've got is question mark IJ, you know, intravenous thrombo uh, thrombolysis. And now I've got to figure out, like, where the stroke is, uh, you know, which side of the body is. Like, it just makes things just a little bit more difficult than it should be. It didn't have to be. Um, but I think I've talked about this in the past as well. Like, there's um, levels of acceptance of people's head when they ask the scans. And what you'll notice is that if you've got an x ray, I think, what earth is going on there? That seems like something else has happened. What you do, you go back to the previous CT or even better, the MRI scan, because people always feel like they've got to work harder for the MRI. And so they'll write loads more information on the MRI oh. report, request. Mm. So you'll see like exactly the history, like what actually happened. Yeah. And, but when it comes to the chest X, it'll be like, she wants to press. Yeah, yeah, yeah but there's yeah. a bit more to this, isn't there? And then you go back and you're like, oh, right, okay. Well, that, that builds a picture. <laughs> yeah. What's the end of doing? Yeah, it's yeah, fair. it's fine. I mean, you know, you kind of get accustomed to little tricks and stuff and you realize that, okay, it's like, oh, yeah, even better is nuclear med. Wow. It's like stories written in nuclear med requests. Yeah, yeah it's really? like, because they, yes. yeah, they're hard to get. They take a long time. People think there's yeah. really high end stuff, which it probably is, but they'll work harder <laughs> for those things. They'll work harder yeah. for those things and write a lot more to try That's and justify why they're getting the scan. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell yeah. you what gives me the ick. So Go one on. of the things that gets me, gives me the ick, which but I because I think it's really insecure, is when people are like, RIP. So I, was like, I just think it's just, it doesn't mean anything. It's like the patient can't read it. And they're like, oh, but it's a bit of respect. Like to who? Like they're not going to mm. read it. They're not going to read mm. it. The only people who are going to read that are people in the bereavement office. Like mm. that's it. That's all they're telling it to. And so I just think it's completely insincere. You don't need to write in the notes. It's oddly, I don't know. It sounds a bit religious or something. It's a bit weird. I just oh, really? don't like it. So I don't write that. Um, but um, so that, I mean, yeah, I don't like it when people go, um, I don't like musing. Sounds amusing. I just think that's a bit weird. Oh, that, and they're that, just talking in general. Like, yeah, so amusing. Like musing. Okay. Like, mm. as in, like, whatever, if people say mm. it, whatever. But inside, I'm like, oh, a little bit. Like, oh. um, <laughs> I just. Mm. Part of you um, dies. I don't know. Yeah, part of me dies. A little bit. Just a tiny bit. Not by, like, a lot. Like, it doesn't shorten my life significantly, but maybe, like, half mm. a second or something. Whereas yeah. things like. As this cardio, I hate cardio. You, I've told you I hate cardio. Oh, yeah, like you cardio. said this. Yeah, that. cardio is uh, just There's cardio. so many, though. There's so many, mm. like, uh, when people say extensive background history. There, there's so many things that people just say, and it's just kind of lazy. I just hate lazy chat. Um, you know, I've been wondering for a while, like, you know when people say query, you know, put a question mark in front of something? I think I was showing my wife, like, something, and it had, like, question mark in front. Oh, I wrote question mark in front of something, right? And she goes, why did you do that? Like, where's the question? I thought, no, <laughs> oh, in medicine, we do this. She goes, and she just went, that's weird. That's and I thought, <laughs> that is weird. It's Where did weird, that come yeah. from? Why, why is that a thing? Because when, okay, I'm, I may, this may or may not be true, but I did not spend, I may have not spent much time on the wards prior to becoming a doctor. I remember the first time I saw that was when I was on the wards. And then um, I was like, what's the question? And you know, you know, sometimes put a little circle, a little tiny circle. For no. And about weight loss. Yeah, for no. I hate when I first that, saw I that, genuinely, that. this is less. I thought this person's had everything. They've had weight loss. They've had oh. this. They've had Because I thought there was positives. And I was like, when I told my age, this person's had everything. And then they're like, <laughs> no, Imran. No. 
<laughs> but that's the thing, actually. That's why I hated it. Because I think if someone obscured that out in any way, then you would think they had that. So I just thought, why not just write no? And yeah, so, could you imagine, like, you yeah. write it in uh, fountain pen, your hand actually smudges it all off and you walk off and then someone else comes in to read the notes. Like, oh my God, they've got every little symptom under the sun. That's what's happened here. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah, it feels a bit strange, doesn't it? Um, mm. There was a tweet that I thought was a bit strange. Not strange. It, it made me laugh. Did you like this one? Um Oh, where's it gone? Oh no, it was um, it was a festival one. Oh, I think I put it in. Oh yeah, I literally wrote "haha." Is awesome. It yeah, so um, yeah, there's gonna after years of this bloke trying to sleep with me, I made a deal that, that if he voted Labour, I would do the deed. He sent proof, so I did. Wow. Uh, he later mm. confessed he rubbed it out and voted Tory. I should have known better. That awful Tory thing to do. The shame. Although I think Labour have ended up in trouble this week, haven't they? What didn't Keir Starmer say something that was a little bit like, oh, mate? It's like it's been handed to you on the plate. Like they've literally the Tories have ruined everything for so long. Even the Tories are a bit sick of themselves, yeah. And you've gone and said something. What was it, Thrusha? I can't remember what it was. It was something he said a few that was things, very, mate. He said a few on, things. Go for it. I think the issue is the the thing is the way you for it, the thing is that I mean he's going to be ahead in the polls. I mean who's Oh, that's my fridge. Do you mind one second? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> that's Thrush's fridge, everyone. In case you're wondering, <laughs> Thrush's fridge is beeping away. It's not a, you don't need to run off to answer your bleep. You don't need to be um, running off to a crash call. This is actually the sound of Thrush's fridge, this which fridge, is pretty yeah, telling uh, me that it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's disconcertingly empty. Mm. Um, so, <laughs> sorry about that. I think, so the issue is like, I think if you look in the polls, like Labour surely, I mean, you just thought that if, you know, to consider Keir Starmer's position related, uh, relative to whoever is going to be the Tory leader tomorrow um, mm. would be kind of really quite far ahead. So yeah, I don't think he's necessarily speaking from a position of winning over people. I think he's probably just saying stuff where he actually believes. And so there are a few things. One, he came out with some an answer to a question where he basically um, said something along the lines of he was talking about children and uh, transitioning. And then he also had some opinion whereby he essentially said nothing should be done um, without the no-, no, I feel very uncomfortable if stuff's done without the knowledge of the parents. And people were mm. like, well, what about like Gillick competence and all that kind of thing? Mm. I think it was, it was essentially, it was quite kind of murky water for him to get into anyway. I think mm. when people start talking about ch- children and um being trans i think i just think like i certainly wouldn't want to wade in on it like it's something whereby this is an important thing to kind of listen to people who know what they're talking about on this subject and Mm. for him to kind of like wade in in this way which essentially is kind of pitching his tent uh, with kind of transphobic people Mm. which is what i certainly i got that impression um was i think a bad thing to do um and it's not something that i'd want from a leader and the second thing was him i think there have been a few kind of comments from the labor party that are just sounding quite kind of anti-immigrant and kind of pushing that line and oh, that's right think, yeah that's the one i thought yeah, of, yeah. so I, I think those two things i mean it's, dep- it's depressing really because you like what kind of labor party would we be voting in i mean speaking about um being a little bit anti-immigrant wasn't there um an, I an account phrase but yeah so we should probably go on to this one so there was a lot of discourse about international medical graduates uh this week and do you know um, where that came from wasn't it a reddit post or something yeah um but then there's been a few people that have echoed that this is one of those things where i feel like um there's probably something underlying and then someone goes and says something and everyone else all these people who feel similarly suddenly sigh a big you know relief oh i can finally say it yeah. and they just come out with it and they just come out with what they're really feeling um and so i think the problem really is what well, not the problem they feel the problem is that there are uh, international medical graduates coming in and taking their jobs and um and the thing is, I mean, look, yeah, Thrusha, what do you think about this? I think the, the problem is, so yeah, it came from, the thing that seems to be most disconcerting about it is where it's come from, because it almost mm. has come a bit out of left field. Because people are mm. talking about competition ratios for, speci- for uh, oh, spe- right, specialty yeah. posts. And it's like, mm. suddenly the discourse became about inter- uh, international medical graduates. And that's mm. the thing that I find uncomfortable, because nowhere on there, or at least from what I could understand, was it really about immigrants but it mm. became about immigrants and so mm. when and when i was expressing that discomfort there were a few people online being like oh i'm about racism and i was a bit like 
why are you making about immigrants? Like, why mm. is why is it about that? It, I mean, it was about competition ratios. Why the hell are, is it now a discourse on this? Mm. Um, that's the thing that's like it's the implication that the there are loads of kind of bull headed people online, and that's yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, this thing, like, I think I don't know where to come uh, come from with this sometimes, but with a lot of these guys, because I think. One minute you, you're talking about, oh, we want, need things to be more fair. We need things to be, to be more fair, right? And then you want to go for a pay rise and say that, look, um, we should be thinking about what the market rate would be. And you've got to think about what it would be like on the open market and how much doctors are worth. But then all of a sudden, when it doesn't please you, you think, actually, I don't want to have a competition ratio. I don't want to have an open market. I want a guaranteed job all the way through. And I can't think, I was literally thinking to myself, like, is there anything where you're guaranteed a job 100% um, all the way through. And there, there is, I mean, medicine is already pretty good for that because you're almost guaranteed a job when you come out as a junior doctor. But moving on from that, like, I can't think of anything like that. And there was something that really struck me years ago. And it was something called the CSI effect. Have you ever heard of that? You must have heard mm -hmm. about this. It was, was it? called the CSI effect. So, you know, crime oh, scene yeah, investigation turned up, yeah. right? That came out. And people were loving that show. And the people who are growing up watching it, they were watching it, it seem more glamorous and all that kind of stuff. And they started applying to go into um, forensics, right? And then obviously the universities think, well, you know, we can make more money out of this. So they started bring, uh, opening up more and more forensics places. But at the, at the other end, there were no jobs, really. So all of a sudden, as a result of the CSI effect, a whole load of people were coming out with these forensic qualifications, but actually having no job at the end of it because they were basing their decisions very much on what they wanted as a child and what they're watching on TV, which I don't think is too indifferent from what happens to a lot of doctors, depending on their environment, what they're watching, you know, outside influences. I don't think anyone's born wanting to be a doctor. I think it's something that happens in the background. And so um, no, at no point has anyone ever said that there's going to be a job for you. And no one has ever said that you can go off and do whatever you want, whenever you want. And, you know, can just, you know, come in and come out and then uh, we'll preferentially treat you uh, a certain way because you're from the UK. And what you're looking for is some sort of monopoly over things. And I don't know about you, but I have met some phenomenal, um, you know, doctors who are from other countries. You know, I hate saying it like this, but if you're going to try and, you know, delineate and demarcate and all the rest of it as them versus us. And you have to understand that these people are fully qualified. They're deemed to be qualified and doing the same job, if not better. And if you can't rise up to be better on, on that, then that just says something about you and you want something else to give you the advantage rather than just being good at your job. And then one more thing I'd say is that, you know, you're looking for advantages here and there and then crying foul when the advantage doesn't come your way. Right. But then I, this happened to, okay, so allegedly this may have happened when I was looking for consultant jobs, right? So I was, there was a consultant job that turned up. And um, after a while, I started noticing that um, I think this job is for someone else. I think this job is for someone else. Like, I feel like there's something going on here. So as I kind of kept a bit of my, my ear to the ground a bit, talking to other people, I realized, yeah, I know whose job, I kind of got a very good idea as to who this job is for. And it's not me. And at first I was like, well, that's not fair. You know, I think to myself, this is not fair. You know, I want to go in. I want to have a fair go at this. It's not fair, but they really want this other person. He's not even that good or she's not even that good. Like why are they giving it to that person and stuff like that? But then I thought to myself, how would I feel if I was a preferred person, if I knew that was my job, would I turn around and say, hey, everyone, look, I don't think that's as fair. I don't think that's fair. I think we should be anonymized. I think we should just turn up and then you won't know who it is. We change our voices. You know what I mean? Like I was never going to do that if the advantage is going to work in my favor. So mm. if it's, if I'm okay with it working in my favor, then I should be okay with it working in someone else's favor when it's their turn to get whatever it is they want. So I just think to myself, like either you make everything fair and be okay when everything's fair, even if it's to your disadvantage, or, you know, you keep, um, you keep going and take advantage of where you can. Yeah. Right. I yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of interesting because the mental gymnast gymnastics that goes into kind of like, them kind of saying oh it should be for like domestic it should be for domestic pe uh, people and then like jamie mm. sherrington who trained in the czech republic was like well yeah. uh what about me i like trained in the czech republic uh, how do you say i mean you know, but people go not you so what do they <laughs> really mean and yeah. then you come here like this kind of like really like mealy mouths like like oh just and you're like just say it just say just the say words it. you don't, mm. I don't know. oh no because we've invested loads of money in it what you didn't do that for jamie Oh, no, but you know, did himself. Uh, yeah. and then yeah, and then the other guy's like, 
And this one person said to me, oh, it's because, you know, you are just basically denuding. We're taking doctors from poorer countries. I'm like, you don't care about them. No, don't pretend mate. you care about them. Mm. If you cared about all those countries, you'd give their money back. You know, the British Empire took. You should be pushing mm. for reparations and, mm. you know, making good with the money you took away. Then they wouldn't be poor anymore. Yeah. Mm. So then, they, you know, they wouldn't be, people wouldn't come over here. They came over here mm. because you were over there. and mm. um. And but they have nothing to say to that. But it's just like interesting though the roundabout ways that they come to like explain this crappy position. That they were. Just say the words. Go on. Mm. But that's the thing. Like this is what I found bizarre. Like there were okay. So I don't know if this happened to you, but I had a good friend of mine that was, um, and I was talking to him about you know who he was and stuff. And him, his father used to, was a GP. So and I was asking, oh that's cool, man. And he's like, no, his dad never wanted to be a GP. He never wanted to be. He wanted to be um, a surgeon. Right. But he'd come from Egypt. And he'd worked decades or something in the NHS, but because he was foreign, quotation mark, even though he yeah. was very good, they never ever gave him like the stepping stones to get further. And then at some point he thought, well, forget it. I'm just going to go do GP instead and have a nice life. And that's mm. essentially what he did. But that is not an uncommon story. I know of mm. aunts and uncles, you know, aunts and uncles, quotation that. marks, who've had the same thing happen to them yeah, yeah. where they've turned up and they're constantly overlooked because of where they're from, but they're actually Absolutely. very good at their job. Um, and then- I had you go, sorry, yeah, go, no, go for it. Oh, no, I, mean, I had an aunt who came from Sri Lanka who was a cardiologist. Mm. And she said mm. that she turned up to interview and she told them how many procedures they were done. They were like, that's not possible that you've done that many mm. on stage. And she, she's like, but I have. And, you know, they just simply just were like, you're, well, you're obviously lying. Or like, wow, or, really? Yeah. Mm. So she ends up taking a different career path. But yeah, sorry. Yeah, but this is what I mean. So like when you've had like people in your family, you, you know, you would have people found in your family or... Uh, so someone that you know have had that situation where because they're from somewhere else, they're not given the same opportunities and you're going to feel bad for them. But then when it comes to you suddenly start thinking, well, no, this is my job. This is the way it should be. I should get like, you're just playing the whole thing all over again, right? Yeah. You're taking out someone else's a parent's opportunity. They're going to have the same story that happens to them in 20 years time. Like my dad or parent, mom, they've made it because, um, yeah, they, they just kept overlooking them because even though they were good, they were from another country. I mean, does that, is that what you really want? Is that truly what you really want? You want to go through this again, having another generation of people having to say the same painful story of not being able to live. Um, what essentially I think is their dreams, like they, if they want to be a surgeon and they were willing to work hard for it and a lot of them do and did, and they're not going to do it. Like, I just feel that's a bit of a shame, but just because they're based on where they're from. Uh, it's very sad. Isn't but yeah, it? going through show. I yeah. mean, so. Um, kind of moving on. From, well, I mean, I think there was lots that kind of happened out of that discourse. And one of the other mm. things that was kind of snowballed from there is the kind of issue of a non-accounts. I feel like mm. we should talk about that, right? Because, yeah, yeah, you know, on. like a lot of opinions that came out were from these non-accounts. And so, mm. and I think, I feel like we were talking before, weren't we, about how we mm. felt about them. And mm. I think we obviously, there are kind of non-accounts who we, who are kind of like respected and, you know, behave in mm. that kind of, uh, uh, a way that's con conducive to I think the idea of Twitter that we have which is mm. generally speaking there's like a med Twitter community right and people use that to say oh but it's all about I don't know famous not famous like certain voices and whatever mm. and this kind of blah but you know there are kind of cool accounts like you know we had um meme reg on and they kind of use that anon anonymity for like well being able to kind of joke about things that we all kind of find humorous mm. but then there are these anonymous accounts that seem to use that kind of anonymous vibe to then like kind of basically kind of pepper other accounts with abuse yeah case. yeah that's the thing like i think um i used to run a non account my account um doc lasky used to be an anonymous account called donny mm. radiology but i think when i was doing I, that's why i feel like on some level i relate to some anonymous accounts out there because for me anyway, I was flunking so much that I didn't want anything um, to come back at me at an ARCP or something. But then the stuff I was tweeting and talking about weren't like going against him. I was never really getting into any big conversation. That's why the account never really went anywhere. Um, but that was the intent. The intention behind it was that I would be able to joke about things a bit like meme reg and make the odd joke. And, you know, and you could, I think I never deleted tweets. You could go all the way back to when I was like that. But. I think with a lot of some of these non-accounts, when they come after you, I feel like they are emboldened by the fact they're anonymous and they think they can say what they want, right? Mm. And um, it, I kind of liken it to when you're driving 
And um, when someone like cuts you up and they might swear at you or something and then drive off. But if you were walking down the street and they actually bumped into you, they're probably like, oh, sorry, mate, I didn't mean that. And you're like, yeah, cool. No worries, man. It's all good. And then walk past. But I think that's and the reason why um, they can do that when they're driving, but not when they're walking is because they've removed the social constraints of the fact that they've got to be nice. They're not going to get thumped in the head or something. There's less likely of a chance of getting thumped. And so um, when you've got an anonymous account, what you're actually getting is what I think the real personality really is. Like if, okay, for any anonymous accounts out there that have fallen into a, have a bit of an argument and you start to say what you really think, if you ever are, if you ever think about who you really are, are you good? Are you bad? What kind of person are you really are when you really want to be? Then just look at what you're tweeting and look at what you're saying and look at how you're making other people feel when you're saying certain things. And then that's who you really are. Mm. And the person that you, your family think you are, your friends think you are, the person that your professional uh, colleagues think you are, that's the fake you because you're constrained by the social constraints or whatever constraints you think you've got that you can't say what you really think. And that anonymous account is a representation of your core beliefs and who you really are. And um, I think we've seen a lot of that um, this week, haven't we? And there was one particular one. Do you see, did you see that one where there were, someone was having a bit of a dig at Shivani? Um, Shivani, yeah. Yeah, and it was some, I think they were just like, I think they were going on and on. And it was like, I mean, eventually you kind of figured out who it was. Yeah. But it was a bit like, you're only saying that because you think you're anonymous. Like you'd never say that to someone's face. You'd never say that. It was really weird. But I'm glad you did because at least you know what they're like now. Yeah. It's really weird because it was about, so Shivani was commenting on another thread, which is from Jessica Wong, who's someone who is someone I worked with in Norwich. She's um, she was basically saying about how she was kind of repeatedly mistaken for another colleague, and then challenged mm. upon the fact she, uh, that she wasn't that other person. Being like, "Are you sure you're not that other person?" In this way that mm. I presume I am supposed to be. We'd hope be. Well, would you hope it's joking? No, you wouldn't. It's wrong either mm. way. But it's for God's sake, joke. like. Mm. Um, but anyway, so Shivani was kind of like commenting on that, and then someone was kind of responding, saying, "Well, maybe it wasn't like on purpose and all this kind of stuff." And then people were kind mm. of. It was such a mess that kind of thread. Because then, mm. uh, this is, that was one of the threads that I kind of got embroiled in because someone then copied in some papers, mm. uh, which is basically like about how some people can't tell. It's about kind of like recognizing racial differences amongst races. And some of this kind of old, I mean, so um, it was kind of an area of interest to me. Like um, <laughs> when I did like the psychology BSc, I actually kind of did some reading on this. I thought, mm. oh, I can, I mean, Oh God, that sounds like a kind of terrible flex. But anyway, it's something I've read before anyway. And I remember thinking okay. at the time, like, All right, this, Trisha. sorry, mate, <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. But anyway, like it just, I remember thinking at the time it was terrible because it's basically based on like looking time and how long have people spent looking at a picture? Like how scientific is that? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and then this person's like copying in these papers. And the thing, I think the reason why it got to me so much is because um, sums up Twitter in a way, or at least kind of like mm. social media where this person was like posting these kind of like articles, which clearly he'd not even read. And then someone else was like, thank you for applying the science. And I was like, if you actually read the paper, it actually kind of contradicts what you're saying. And it, show, <laughs> and it says like, uh, you know, these are often these kind of the idea that they can't perceive the difference between different races is their own perception. That's the right, mm. like, so they tell themselves that they can't, like, it's just ridiculous. But uh, yeah, you're right. Like, uh, I think if, as you were saying before, like if they were kind of face to face with Shivani, would they be pr so re like they'd realize mm. that's not the way to speak to another human being? They'd realize just on basic, yeah. basic human level. Uh, but for exactly. some reason, they feel emboldened to speak like that. Yeah, they feel emboldened to say, well, and there's another account which I'm not even going to name. But and the thing, and what's funny is that, like, okay, with the other account, I mean, we know who you are. I've yeah. knew who you are a long time ago. Yeah. And you're kind of pretending that as if no one knows who you are, but actually a lot of people do know who you are. It, it's not hard. And um, and then this person, so the, these are non-accounts are so emboldened that they're going to start trying to upset people. And that's, a, that's my point. Like one of my points is like, I often think to myself, when I do something, what is the outcome? What am I trying to aim for? What am I trying to do? So some of you may have gone and made an non-account thinking that you're trying to do something good for the world. But what you're actually doing is doing something good for yourself in terms of like, you are trying to help yourself. It's a selfish thing. You're not doing something for the greater good. You're going around upsetting people quite obviously. You know, you're rounding them up. You're not, you, even though you might ruin, not ruin their day per se, you're still not going to have it like a positive effect on their day. If they're going to think about you and you're an on account, they're not going to be like, oh yeah, that was really fun. I really like them. I really learned a lot from them. And I'm really glad they're voicing opinions that everyone thinks. 
you make if you're going to start going at people personally, I just think you've got a, a lot to think about for yourself if you wish to, as to who you really are. Like the fact that you think that it's okay to upset people, um, and you're thinking to yourself, I'm doing something for the greater good. I don't think you are. I don't mm -hmm. think you're doing anything for the greater good. You're just trying to wind people up and trying to get off on one on, on yourself. And this is what I mean. Like, if you've got an on account, think to yourself, okay, what am I trying to achieve here? Am I trying to be funny? Then go be funny. Uh, that's cool. Everyone loves a funny person. If you're trying to voice and if you're trying to highlight issues, then go, go ahead and highlight those issues, right? But don't start like trying to what bully people behind the guise of being anonymous, right? Mm. That doesn't seem very fair. And I also think that I know you're trying to highlight certain things, but do you really think that dress up as a raptor? As in, you know, if we're having a big, uh, uh, like an important discussion, right? Let's say me and Thrusha are having a big, important discussion. Let's say mm. we're having a board meeting on Twitter because we just bought Twitter for 44 billion. <laughs> and suddenly someone dresses as a pizza walks in and voices their opinion. Do you really think I care what a pizza thinks? Yeah. Or someone dresses as a little dinosaur goes, hello, everyone. This is what I think. Like, <laughs> you're dressed as a dinosaur, mate. Yeah. Can you go away, please? And yeah. if you wanted me to take you seriously, I, I know everyone wants to dress the way they want, and I don't have any issues with that, but I can't take you seriously if you're going to dress up as a dinosaur. So it's the same thing. I just think that you're, you're kidding yourself if you think you're doing anything beyond just, I don't know, making a pastime out of hurting people's feelings and annoying people. Yeah. I hope they had a good Sunday. You're like this. A big kind of perpetrator, you know, a, a quite common mm. avatar for these kind of anonymous accounts with bunches of numbers are usually dogs. You know, oh, what a surprise. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got in trouble, didn't I, this week? I shared that video that, oh, that was horrible, um, I sent mate. to you. That was horrible, yeah. Did I send so. you another one? I sent you another one. What did I send you this week? Yeah, I didn't actually watch that. So, mate. You but didn't yeah, watch that moving one? Moving on. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, so there was an interesting kind of thing that I saw. Uh, so a tweet from Dr. Andrew McKay. Uh, his mm. surname, you should follow, give him a follow. It's M-A-C-K-A-Y. Uh, he said, saw this on a uh, personal trainer's Facebook page. While lifestyle medicine might be a thing, delegating all responsibility for a lifestyle to your GP seems a bit much to fit into seven minutes before they get on to why you've turned up today. And the reason why mm. he's saying that is because he's, um, the post is a picture where it says, if your doctor prescribes you medication without first asking you about your diet, your sleep, your exercise routine, your water consumption, whether you have any stuff <laughs> in this, like a building and they're stressed <laughs> in your life, then you don't have a doctor, you have a drug dealer. And it sounds really Ooh. pithy. Yeah, yeah. No, you made me sound cool. Yeah, go, go yeah, on. Yeah. yeah, I'll take that. I know. That's why we drive being dodgy. Later on, like, yeah. But the thing is that um, <laughs> the interesting thing is, I mean, it sounds very pithy. And mm. the reason why I kind of thought that'd be an interesting to put in is because I saw something on Twitter called Randolini's Law. You know, have mm. you heard that, Brandolini's Law? No, I think uh, this is the first time I heard of it from okay, when we were so, talking this week. Yeah. So Brandolini's Law, also known as the bullshit asymmetry, asymmetry principle, is an internet <laughs> and large, and it basically emphasizes the dif difficulty of debunking false, facetious, or otherwise misleading information. The amount mm. of energy needed to refute bullshit is an order of magnitude larger than to produce it. And this is something that I felt. Like, you know, people mm. let's say that personal trainer just put that thing there. It sounds very clever in his head. You know, oh, it's a wrong deal. <laughs> you know, take that. <laughs> doctors hate personal trainers. Um, mm. But, you know, and the thing is that, like, the complicated answer, well, the fact of the matter is it is complicated, isn't it? And, mm. you know, we don't get commission for handing out medications, but, you know, a lot mm. of the time for medical conditions, we can't just use kind of um, strong words and, you know, like a stiff handshake to kind of make... Uh, things better often have to use medications but mm. you know it's more of a complicated answer than essentially what this kind of personal trainer is suggesting from their post and so i think it's a good example yeah. of brandolini's law it's true isn't it but this is where i think some of this just trying to play to the you know just going anti-establishment being a bit you know there's i think there's a lot to do with um this kind of stuff in uh okay so i mean obviously i'm talking about business again but there's a lot of myths, I think, that exist in business and entrepreneurialism and stuff because people have a very, um, they've got an idea about what entrepreneurialism is and what being a business person is. But it's like, if you've never run those things, you've never done those things. And like, how could you possibly know that? Like, you've got to work like this. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. And if you want to make it, you've got to do this. Like, well, there are plenty of people who do very good jobs without having a good, good jobs of what they're doing without having to be a ball breaker and undercut someone and be horrible and mean and all that, you know, the kind of stuff they try and push on um, the apprentice mm. and everyone kind of watch the apprentice is like, oh, well, you know what? They, they can't even sell, you know, that's their problem. It's like, yeah, but you don't have to sell. Like, what are you talking about? That's why you sit on the sofa watching it. Yeah. And it's the same sort of thing here. I just feel like 
when it comes to the fitness industry, you notice that there there are certain things as like um, in order we've complicated a lot, haven't we? Like we we kind of say you got to think about the diet, you got to you got to eat this, you got to eat that, you got to do this, you got to, and we all fall into it. But then actually, a lot of the time, just go exercise. Just whatever it is, just go exercise. That's all you've got to do. Don't worry about the food. Don't worry about all that stuff. And the, all you've got to do is just start exercising regularly. Just do that. And then hopefully everything else will kind of fall into place. But then a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to even start because I don't know what I should be eating. And I don't know how much cardio I should be doing, how much weight I Forget it. Turn up. Just go. Just go. Don't. But then it doesn't feed into the narrative of, oh, yeah, but you've got to, you've got to want it. You've got to be, a, you've got to like put your head down. You've got to measure out your meals and you know, give up your life for us. I don't know if yeah. that's true, mate. I think yeah. you could have a decent, I'm not saying a, I'm an Adonis character, but you can have a decent physique, good enough, without having to stress too much about every little thing. Fine, you won't look like a cub model, but it's all right, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's all realistic this. anyway. I mean, you see, the thing that I kind of find some comfort, I guess, is, you know, mm. when you find out about what some of the kind of cover models or the, you know, the Marvel action heroes and stuff have to do to look the, the way they do for the movies. Like, yeah. the, like Daniel Craig, I think he's particularly kind of, his kind of admissions were kind of, um, kind of enlightening, you know, when he was talking, you know, the, mm. he was quite famous for that scene in a swimming pool, right? And people were like, oh, yeah, he was coming out. And he's like, yeah, mate, yeah. so that day I had to like prepare like hardcore, didn't drink any water, just was mm. like cut, cut, cut for that scene. And then after that, mm. you know, obviously everything else I had a shirt on. So, and yeah. you kind of realize that it's so hard to kind of sustain these kind of images that we're exposed to. Um, yeah, it's unrealistic yeah. as well. And it also like look, when someone like that does that kind of shoot, they know that they've got to look good for a certain point in time for exactly. a certain amount of time. And on top of that, they're going to get paid millions of exactly. pounds. They've got nutritionists, millions. personal trainers, yeah, you know, everything's exactly. kind of geared towards that. Yeah. So, um, so that when I saw that kind of that thing from that per, that personal trainer, it's like, yeah, just you're just playing the same old game, isn't it? You don't need doctors. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. just it, if you say that, then you get followers. If you say follow the doctor and take your medication the way you should and look after your blood pressure and all this kind of thing, that that's not going to get likes and stuff. Yeah. That's not what people want to hear. They want to know about anti-establishment. That's what they want, Very uh, which is pretty much what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. We're coming up to touch. We're coming up close to touch. So, oh, well, and we've oh, got to do the balls we've up of a... the week thing. So we've got... Okay, but also <laughs> there are a few threads that I want to bring up. But yeah, okay. okay. Um, it's flown by, isn't it? Oh, we're having to... Mm. Yeah, anyway. Um, so the balls up of the week um, is uh, a tweet from, a, a, I think it's a hospital in Croydon, apparently. But anyway, there's like mm. an urgent message. Dear all, so this is an email that was kind of circulated on Twitter. Uh, recently, we have had a lot of sickness, which has been unfortunate, but also had a terrible impact on the service we provide in ED. If you are sick at any time, you must email myself and also ring extension 3847 and speak to the consultant on call or registrar on duty. If you are sick, mm. we will cancel all bang shifts for two weeks regarding the sickness policy. Or if you have no shifts after that date, you will not be able to book any shifts for two weeks. When arriving for oh. your shift, now at this point, when I've seen shift that many times, I start to see shit. But anyway, sorry. Please report to the <laughs> consultant or duty in majors or registrar if out of hours so that they are aware that you are in the department and they can allocate an area for you to work. It's important after seeing patients you do your D parts, as these patients will be recorded against your name, which will enable us to see how many patients you see on your shift. If this is not done, your patients will be allocated to someone else. Please, can I also ask you to send your team timesheets to us the week after you've worked? Regularly signs, who regularly signs this off, and she has deadlines to meet. If there's a delay, your payment will be delayed. So a few issues with that, right? So the one hmm. is this kind of whole idea of this kind of, shall we say, stringent kind of application to. Um, how you're supposed to report your own sickness, but two, cancelling your bank mm. shifts for two weeks afterwards, mm. which seems odd. And then three, the counting number of patients that you see on shifts. And then four, this kind of weird payment being delayed stuff. Well, well, I guess so. So go on. What's, well, what's yeah, it's, I mean, as you're trying to, you're trying basically, look, you if, you just take, if you get to the crux of this, yeah. They don't want you to call in sick. That's what they don't want. And they're trying to penalize you for calling in sick by saying you can't work for two weeks. That's what they're trying to do. They don't want you to cancel because you're sick and they're going to try and do something about it. Yeah. And this is the thing about contractual work. I do a bit of contractual work at the moment. Um, actually, I was just saying, so um, one of the contractual, contractual workplaces I work for, apparently 
they've got it stipulated that I shouldn't be working for anyone else at all um, while I'm doing contractual work with them. Mm. And I found it a bit odd. And I said to them, listen, I, I think it's a bit weird because if you're a contractor, the whole point is that you can work for other people and um, I'm not employed by you. So how could you enforce that rule? Because you're not paying me. Uh, like if you, if there's no work coming from you, you're not going to promise me to work. Then what do I do? Just sit around and have no work because I'm only allowed to work for you and you only. And they're like, no, you need to think about this. And then, um, and they said to me, you need to email us back straight away and tell us that you have now stopped contracting work for anyone else and only going to do work for us. And so at first I thought, yeah, fine, I'll just do whatever. And then I realized, no, that's not very fair. So I emailed mm-hmm. them back and said, you know, what, I'm not doing it because I, don't, I can't do that because um, the whole way this works is that I work for other, lots of other people and it just works the best for me. So if you want your computer and your station, just go ahead and take it. Mm-hmm. And they never got back to me. They just left it. And this is one of those things, like, I think what they're trying to do here is they're trying to get a control of contractual work, but they can't penalize them. They can't do anything because this is what it is. Bank shifts, right? That's all it is. Mm. You come in, you come out, but, and it's not like an employee that if they suddenly decide that they're not going to turn up, then they get in trouble. If someone who's working a bank shift says, actually, you know what, I can't bother to turn up next week. I'm going to cancel the shifts. Then nothing happens. And then they're stuck in it, aren't they? What are they going to do? They've got to try and find someone else to cover it. So what they're trying to do is trying to have some kind of upper hand on someone who's doing contractual work by saying that if you call in sick, then um, I know you're not employed by us, but we'll make things difficult for you. Mm. Wink. That's what that is, which is yeah, yeah. It's a terrible balls right? up. Yeah. It's the implication. Like, which brings us on to yeah. sponsors. So support for this podcast, Two Medics, is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped Performance <laughs> Package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join, join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with the, this exclusive offer. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code 2medics at manscaped.com. And if my math is correct, that's 12 million balls. Um, so we were sent over the performance package 4.0, which arrived with a lawnmower, <laughs> a trimmer, a weed whacker, an ear nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop reviver, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Lawnmower is really awesome, I have to say. Uh, it's fourth generation trimmer with cutting edge ceramic blades. You got a 4,000 LED light so you can see what you're trimming. Um, it's really good. I genuinely, um, I've actually got the Manscaped products at my desk and occasionally may smell them because they smell <laughs> nice. <laughs> they genuinely do smell nice. So look, if you support the podcast, I know not many people have taken on the Patreon. Not many people have done the buy me a coffee, but at least get yourself some boxes, people. Come on. Or buy yeah. someone that you love some boxes. Do use uh, two medics. So get 20% off at free shipping with the code two medics at manscaped.com. That's 20% off free shipping at manscaped and use the code two medics to unlock your confidence. Always use the right tools for the job with manscaped. Right. So that was the balls up of the week, I think. It was. There was one I did, I wanted to bring up, Sarisha. It yeah. was a tweet about naming your child. And um, oh, yeah. this is something that I've come, I have myself have been guilty of, I admit. Uh, so look, so I'm going to, let's explain it first. So um, someone on Reddit said, well, naming your kid, use the first slash middle name combo with the initials DR. That way, when making any sort of reservations, they can use their initials. And when written down, people think they're a doctor and get preferential treatment. A friend of my grandpa does this and it works wonders. And then someone said, has um, recording your title doctor ever gotten you preferential treatment? So, Trisha, have you ever had preferential treatment or any sort of advantages from being a doctor? Because from the looks of what people are saying here, no, they don't. They've never had any sort of advantage whatsoever from being a doctor professional or something. I mean, uh, I definitely have used it when going to Nando's. I mean, didn't you not? I caned that. I caned that, especially as a student. Oh my God. And definitely when I was, I don't think it actually helped me that much when I uh, was dating on the internet dating. I definitely Mm. put that down. But interestingly, we were talking before, weren't we, about this kind of humble flex thing and how we pretend, Mm. right? And I definitely Mm. do this thing. And I know it's kind of a humble flex way. If someone asks me what I do, I'll say, mm. I work in a hospital. I won't say I'm a doctor. Mm. But that's not mm. because I'm being humble, I think. I think it's because... You want to ask. I want to ask, yeah, what do you do in the hospital? Mm. And then I go, I'm a doctor. And therefore, mm. <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> that's even worse. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I used really to do this a lot. Actually, my dad, you know, obviously he's got his um, own ideas of what a doctor should be. 
Right. And I think one day he told me, Imran, you know, you know, you know, you don't dress like a doctor. You know that you don't really act like one. And I, at the time I was like, yeah, that's awesome. Cause I don't <laughs> care. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was at a party and I was sitting around and I was chatting to some people. And then someone did actually ask me, what do you do? And then, um, I said, oh yeah, I'm a doctor. And they were like, and they were like, oh, this guy's a doctor, this guy's a doctor and stuff oh, like wow. that. And I remember thinking like, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, um, I've taken advantage of being a DR loads of times, is it, wherever I can. And this is, what, this is one of the things that I think is a little bit silly. Like, I don't know why there must be at some level at some point in your life where you became a doctor because of the social implications that it may incur in terms of life in general. Like, I mean, I don't think it hurt my chances when I was looking to get married or when I finally met my in-laws that I was a doctor walking in. Like, I think that probably helped. Um, and yeah, reservation sometimes. Yeah, they'll say, "Oh, you're a doctor." And I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, okay, cool. And then they'll they I've had flights where they've given me slightly better seats because of being a doctor. So yeah, and mate, during the pandemic, I told you before. I threw shit. I've told Especially, you, but I rinsed it during the pandemic, man. I was like, "This is the time." I got gym equipment. I got. I did loads of stuff. Like whatever, whatever was going, I went for because yeah. um, I think it's silly. It's, I feel like I think it's one of those things where when you. At some point, you do have to count your unfair advantages, and I call them unfair advantages because they are unfair. You being a doctor is an unfair advantage. You getting to become a doctor, and I know someone's going to come out with some story about how they made it from nothing. I, I get that. I get that. But you're intelligent. Therefore, you've got an unfair advantage as someone who's not intelligent, or someone planted the idea in your head, or you thought of that idea in your head, which gave you the unfair advantage to get to where you are. So yeah. to say that you've got no unfair advantage and pretend that you've got no unfair advantage is silly. And then with those unfair advantages and not even try and use them to do whatever you need to do is also silly. I think like no one's saying that um, you should be embarrassed by being a doctor. No one's saying that, you know, the, this is a bad thing. Uh, and if someone's going to give you a discount or treat you differently because of the job that you do, like even when I went to get my surgery, yeah. you know, um, yeah, they were, I didn't tell them at first because I was a bit embarrassed, actually, in truth. I didn't want to be like, oh, check me out. Uh, I was actually embarrassed. And then I think when I gave my, went to pay for it, they said, oh, you're a doctor. I said, yeah. And they said, oh, right. Okay. Well, why didn't you say anything? And I thought, well, it's just a job, isn't it? It's not a big deal. And they're like, no. And they actually gave me a discount on the eye surgery. And I thought, no, why did I not say that? If, you, if I knew I was going to get like, you know, 10% off this, I think it was 20%. Hmm. I should have just said it. So now I'm like, well, you know what? Like I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to say no to 20% off whatever I'm getting. I'm taking it. Just like yeah. the two two medics at manscaped.com. Take advantage mm. of what you can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. I wanted to include a thread just because, you know, mm. uh, Matthew Perry cussed a disrespected Keanu Reeves. And it turns out there's a lot of stuff that yeah. people don't know about Keanu Reeves. Now, we're both fans of Keanu, right? Because of the Matrix. Yeah, I mean, who's not? Who isn't? Yeah, yeah. Well, Go people on. aren't. Yeah. And people don't really know enough um, about his backstory. So I just, there's a nice thread by at text Chatham that goes through a few things. And I thought I'd mention it. Because if people mm. aren't fans of Keanu Reeves, they should be. And here's some reason. So he's a regular dude who likes to train beat Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and seeks continued self-improvement. So he was abandoned by his father at three and grew up with three different stepfathers. He has dyslexia. Mm. His dream of becoming a hockey player was shattered by a serious accident. His daughter died at birth. His wife died in a car mm. accident. His best friend, River Phoenix, died of an overdose. His sister battled cancer. No bodyguards, no luxury houses. Keanu lives in a small apartment and is often seen riding the subway in New York City. When filming the movie The Lake House, he overheard two costume assistants, one crying they would lose their house if they didn't pay £20,000. That day, Keanu deposited the amount in their bank. He don donated millions to hospitals, including $75 million of his earnings from the Matrix to charities. In 2010, on his birthday, he walked into a bakery and bought a brioche with a single candle, ate it in front of the bakery and shared coffee with people who stopped to talk. 1997, paparazzi found him walking one morning with a homeless <laughs> man in LA, listening to him and sharing his life in a few hours. Sometimes the ones most broken from the inside are the ones most willing to help others. This man could buy anything. Instead, every day he gets up and chooses one thing that cannot be bought to be a good man. The world needs <laughs> strong men like Keanu. And there's a picture oh, of him. Right. Jiu -Jitsu. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love that. Oh, dear. Love him. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. But yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. No, it's good. Good for you, Keanu. Good for you, Keanu. I hope. Yeah. Uh, I hope you're happy, and I hope um, everything that they say about you is true. Oh God! Oh that God! Would be nice. Wait, can I mention another one? I want to mention another one. Go on, so there's go a on. tweet. So it's one of my favorite. You know, I love a good meme, right? And so one of the mm. kind of is it kind of an elder meme, which is mm. the one with Mel Gibson. You know, there's a picture of Mel Gibson. He's kind of oh, yeah. like he's explaining stuff to like. Um, 
to someone who's dressed up as Christ, covered in blood, and the implication yeah. is that someone's explaining to someone who's kind of really suffering. There's no reason. Yeah, I love that meme. Anyway, yeah. so the meme here is the caption is people without kids explaining how they needed and got that extra hour of sleep, you know, when the clock's turned over, and how kids just, you know, kids don't realize that yeah. the clock's gone back. Okay. So they'll, so instead of waking up at five, <laughs> they wake up at four or whatever. And um, so it's just quite funny. But then the interesting, so that, that in itself was just a funny joke, right? But some mm. of the replies, oh my God, there's so much like, really so, yeah some people being like you chose to have kids how do you complain oh, yeah, about them one. and oh you know mm. and all this kind of stuff and um i the, often i find when you get something kind of funny on twitter the best thing is actually in the replies you'll get something that's 1.4 times funnier in the replies and there was a reply with a meme which basically said i'm so upset that this <laughs> this meme didn't 100 percent reflect my own existence in life as, and, yes, <laughs> and i think that you know these that kind of people is... the reply guys you get there you get like vexed yeah. and they're like this doesn't consider me and yeah i thought that's quite funny yeah that's so true isn't it kids are just yeah i think we, we finished a few episodes talking about our children and um relentless man that's the yeah. only way to say it they just never stop i never ever stop they just you know like today i felt actually you know i went swimming with my kid today right and um and um, basically, I took him to the shower and I put the soap on his head, but I must have actually put some straight into his eye. Like, I must have <laughs> literally put straight into his eye. Yeah. He also was and so he went, mad at you. He literally screamed. Like, what happened? What happened? He goes, you put it straight into my eye. And he went on and on about it for ages. Yeah. And yeah. We're, like, we're changing afterwards. We're in the car. And he's and he can, <laughs> is my eye red? Is my eye red? And then after a while, I, I got sick. I was like, that, I, like I, I didn't want to say anything to you, but your eye fell out and it's gone down the drain. <laughs> And he goes, what? Is it just a black hole there? I was like, yeah. And you only need one eye. He goes, oh he goes my God. do I look like an alien now? Your I was like, yeah, yeah, you look like an alien now. You look like an alien. And oh, I was like, is Christ. he really believing this? I can't believe he's just brilliant. And then I was like, look, I'm yes. just joking with you. Relax. Just relax Man, with your eye. You're... And then when he saw his mum, I was like, look at my eye. Look at my eye. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be spending so much on therapy for that kid. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, dear. Anyway. Anyway, cool. Cool. All right, well. Yeah, Thanks, well, everyone have a good week. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to, you know, interact with some of you anons. Please feel free to come out in a good conversation. Actually, in most time, I ignore you a lot anyway. So whatever. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Don't really All care. Right. All right, then. <laughs> have a good week. Take Bye. care, guys. Bye.